I mean, having a 15 year old girl who's proud of you um, and who is excited about that and cheering for you at that age is something that may never happen again. How are you guys doing? Are you still basking in your amazing race glory? Basking. 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 Um, it was so funny. Very little basking happened. I mean, it was amazing. We got to watch the finale with the whole team. There's this amazing party put together by Lulu and Lala. It was so much fun. And then, you know, we got back to real life, which is, you know, uh, we had to do, we landed and we had to do some laundry because my dog got muddy paws all over our sheets and I had to go grocery shopping. So <laughs> not much basket. Not much basket. We have a car to get fixed. We have, car, yeah, a car. Pull. Like, yeah, we just sort of got back to work. It was, the basking was fun, but it was about a day. Yeah, yeah right. Life hits you uh, real quick after that, right? Yeah. Um, so how, was it ever just difficult or to stay motivated and focused on the amazing race after it was put on hold for so long because of COVID? Uh, it, it wasn't difficult because we assumed it was never going to happen okay. again. Like what, like once the world shut down and then we got to look at sort of the global landscape and how difficult travel was, it really kind of changed everyone's habits. And so after about a year, we were just like, hey, we were, we were part of that amazing race show that never aired because yeah. they couldn't finish it. Yeah, we really thought it'd be just a fun story. We'd tell at cocktail parties like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, remember that? That was us. Because uh, I, you look at the, it, it, that's why it's so spectacular that they were able to pull this off because you look at just the foundation of what this travel show is and interacting with people and globally, how in, in, in this new world order of COVID, how could you possibly pull that off? But they did. So like Ben said, we, we didn't think about it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So when you got the phone call and they're like, all right, it's back on. What were you guys, were you like in panic mode? Really? We have to like fully prepare oh. for this. No, we said no. We're oh, like, did. thanks, have fun without us. Um, it, I mean, it just didn't seem very responsible. Mm -hmm. uh, but then what happened was CBS, they got uh, one of their producers on the line who actually put together the safety package. And it was unbelievable. I mean, they changed the travel parameters. That was the first probably most important thing because you can't be running through airports and, you know, crowded markets. Uh, but then they also had uh, every almost every day testing. They had these bubbles and zones of ways just to keep you safely with people who aren't going to give you an exposure risk. And by the time they got done with the plan, it was actually we talked to each other. We're like, this is safer than us staying in our hometown. Yeah. And so then it then we kind of made the decision like, let's do it. Yeah. And it was it wasn't that we didn't want to go back. Of course we wanted to go back. Yeah. But it, as parents, we were in the middle of a p pandemic, chancing us, one of us getting sick and having to stay behind even longer. Like yeah. it just, that's what didn't feel responsible. But hey, I mean, they pulled it off. And just like Penn said, I did feel safer on the race course than in my hometown during that time. Right. Was it tough for you to leave your kids during this time as well? Not only just, you know, filming wise, but with everything going on with the state of the world. Yeah. It really was. I think even I mean, the first time we left, it was really, really hard. And that's something that not all the teams had to deal with. And, you know, we I, I wrote them each notes that they would open on every day that we were gone, you know, with like yeah. a couple of them had like a little gift card and stuff, but some they were just nice notes. And it was it was really hard to leave this time especially because we had been at home together for, at the time, 19 months. You know, they were doing online school and we loved it. It wasn't convenient. The kids did not love online school, but I loved being home with my family. So in that way, we had grown so much closer. So to leave them for the first time in 19 months for more than a night, uh, it was really, really hard. Yeah, I, mean, I, I left my job um, because the hours kept me away from my kids several years ago. And like, this has been such a gift to spend time with them, which makes me different from Tom Brady. He retired for six weeks to be with his kids. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then he went back to work. Like we generally don't like, we have a tough time being away from our kids. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and I think it showed even on the race a little bit and it led to loneliness, anxiety, like all kinds of things. And so that was, that was easily the toughest part. Yeah, yeah, I know. I love Tom Brady home for 30 days. He's like, this is not for me. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Like, maybe spend, I don't know, a couple more weeks. That was the shortest retirement ever. That was amazing. Definitely, definitely made me laugh last night. <laughs> yeah. uh, how hard was it for you to keep this secret from your kids? After mm -hmm. you won, you couldn't tell anybody. And I would imagine, like, I would be pressuring my parents, like, nonstop, being like, what happened? Tell me everything. The, the Every single day, multiple times a day, they would just just throw in by like, hey, so did you win? Did you win? How'd you do? They would sneak it in. 
Yeah. Like little bits. It'd be like, how was your day? Yeah. What time is dinner? And did you win? Yeah. And so we just, we just started lying to them. We said, we'd say yes one day. We'd say, Hey, we finished ninth. Hey, no, we didn't even make it back. Hey, and they'd realize quickly that we were just lying to them at most of the time, mm -hmm. which is not a great thing to do to your kids, but they brought it on themselves. They just kept asking us over and over and over again. And, uh, yeah, but they, they genuinely, right. Did not know. They did not know. And yeah. I think they, um, and so they got very, it was, it was really hard to keep this from them, but I knew it was too big of a secret to trust to a 12 year old. So we just weren't gonna do that. Mm -hmm. And then um, it, I, every week watching it, they would get on Wednesdays, it would air, they would get so anxious about how we did that they were just a ball of nerves every Wednesday. And so I started feeling bad, but now that we can tell them it's such a relief and it almost feels real now for the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we crossed that finish line in October and then went straight to the airport. I'm like, we just did this thing. Did that really happen? Yeah. Like did that? And we came home and had to, you know, like drove them to school the next day. I'm like, did we, did that big, huge life event actually happen? And now that it's out and we can talk about it, it feels real for the first time. That's gotta be the strangest thing going through, like said, like you said, this big life moment and you can't share it with anybody but each other. It's gotta be the strangest feeling, I would imagine. And we've talked to some of the other race winners about it. They all went through the same thing. It doesn't yeah. feel real um, mm -hmm. until you're able to share it with the people that you love. And for us specifically, that was our children. Like it mm -hmm. became real when, when they got to see us cross the finish line. And that moment was spectacular. And actually someone, one of the other cast members got it on camera for us. And mm -hmm. um, just like the look on their face Faces and their shock, I think, was part of it. But also just, I mean, having a 15-year-old girl who's proud of you um, and who is excited about that and cheering for you at that age is something that may never happen again. It was great. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, no. She always will be proud. She definitely will be. So what was your strategy kind of going into this? And what was the most challenging part for the both of you? Um, strategy. That's a great question. Did we have strategy? We did. We did. So okay. our, 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 our original strategy was to prepare as well as we could. That mm -hmm. Kim was kind of in charge of that. Um, to watch as many old races as we could to try to get ourselves in the field. Because I, I think you hear from everyone that when you're on the race, like everything kind of goes out the window. So getting a familiarity with what it was like. Um, as part of our preparation, we we went to counseling and learned how to communicate. We it wasn't it, part of our, by the way, we'd already we went done to that. counseling because we needed to go to counseling. We didn't yeah. go for the yeah. amazing race. That's, that's a good <laughs> point. Yeah. But we also made agreements on the way that we were going to talk to each other and how we were going to talk to each other. Like our, our number one goal was like, let's just not get mad at each other. Let's find a way to reconcile that. So really a lot of our a lot of our strategy was based around the way that we would communicate with each other. And then on top of that, um, we we really didn't want to announce ourselves as like, we're the team to beat. Um, and at the same time, didn't want to ruffle any feathers as far as uh, making alliances that you can't make or making enemies that you shouldn't make, right? Like we tried to just kind of be chill about all that. Be chill. I think, yeah, I think communication was definitely our superpower. And the, the biggest, I mean, besides training like going upstairs with a weighted backpack and the physical training we put in the 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 conversations we had ahead of time were just how we were going to be you're going to make mistakes you're a human being and how we can show each other and ourselves some grace in those moments yeah how would you say that this uh, experience changed your relationship if it has at all it you know it was I'm not going to say it was a honeymoon I think it was a super stressful honeymoon if anything but it did show me you, need, you don't have a cell access to technology or a cell phone. You spend a lot of time in a hotel room and a lot of times there wasn't any English speaking TV, so yeah. there's not a lot to do. I have to say when you take all the, 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 the duties of real life and the thousand things you have to do in couplehood and parenthood and you strip that away and it's just the two of you, it really reminded me like how good we are at our core. I think that it, it you know, we had a great relationship going in, but just being able to focus on each other was really, it was, it was great. Yeah. One of the things you don't realize when you go on the race is it really is a digital diet. I mean, they, people talk about wanting to do that in real life. Like let's, let's put down the screens. Let's get away from the televisions and really focus on, on life. And that's what it is for several weeks. It's a digital diet. It's part of the rules of the game, but really the unintended effect is 
um, you are with your partner and you're present for your partner much more than you used to be. And we got to the point where we were like anticipating each other's moods mm -hmm. and picking up on, you know, my mm -hmm. sort of my, my anxiety, her anxiety that comes with mental health. And um, so I, I'll say the same thing. It, it, I felt very close to her because of all of that and because everything else was stripped away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you miss it at all? <laughs> Or did you like have, did you miss it at all having the, or the digital diet or? Well, I mean, so I, the only time I missed having my cell phone was if we were watching a movie in the hotel room and I wanted to look up like, what up, what other movie were they in? Yeah. And I thought, oh, you yeah. know, like that is the only time I missed my cell phone. But other than that, I was not excited to get the cell phone back. Of mm. course, I missed talking to my kids and I would have, you know, loved that experience. But I, um, I did not miss it at all. Yeah, I, I, it must be nice to kind of just decompress from that for a little while, I would imagine. Was, yeah. age, was age ever a factor for you guys going into this? Um, I, you know, sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, you know, the older you get, there are some things that takes longer to recover physically. For, and we're in great shape. We work out all the time. But there was a challenge at the end that was literally a vision test yeah. for Penn and the second, the penultimate leg. And we got there, you know, a good bit ahead of the other teams. We would still be there for the record if I had to do it because I have worse <laughs> vision than him, but it was a vision test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's something that age, you know, age is a factor in these things. Th that was definitely an, uh, a factor. I think in little short sprints when we were trying to keep up with these, with these young people, it just, <laughs> it just didn't happen. We couldn't keep up with them. Uh, age helped because a lot of younger people have never had to read a paper map and it was a huge part of navigating on this race because we didn't take public transportation we had to self-drive our own cars we didn't have any electronics so we had a paper map and kim and i as adults and also as former news reporters used to like read maps all the time yeah so, so in, in in there are definitely ways where being a little older was it, it, you know, the vision test, sure. but there are many ways, just the general life experience of reading a map, having to self-navigate, right. driving stick shift. Mm -hmm. There are ways where our age really helped us. Yeah, definitely. So are people recognizing you more now for the amazing race or your viral videos? <laughs> Um, I have to say we went to Disney recently and it was, I was shocked how many people said they were watching us on the race, mm -hmm. I think. So it was, it was good. So maybe half and half. Yeah, definitely. I know you, uh, you wrote a book called, um, everybody fights, right. And all right. about your own fight fails and things like that. What would you say is your biggest marriage fail? Biggest mm. marriage fail. <laughs> um, I think, you know, there's a theme in our book about mature people ask for what they want. And yeah. we use that phrase, it's kind of a catchphrase in our house, mature people ask for what they want. Mm -hmm. You know, down to what do you want for dinner? And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, mature people ask for what they want. But I think- I think we waited too long to figure that out. Yeah, I think that yeah. we waited too long to figure that out. I think that early on in our marriage, especially we would, tap dance around each other or I expected him to read my mind. Yeah. He had to know when I just needed some calm and some quiet and I needed some alone time. I, I expected him to know it doesn't work that way. My biggest fail was was taking things personally, like when a, a mood shifted or when something was wrong, always thinking, oh, that's my fault. That's my job to fix instead of listening and, and just trying to get to the heart of what's going on and being there. So I mean, that's that was me. You learn something new every single day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now that you guys are back in the swing of things, you're putting together uh, videos again. I know that you uh, quickly did uh, Don't Talk About COVID to the tune of Encantos, We Don't Talk About Bruno with a three-year-old. I have that song in my head all the time. <laughs> um, did Disney ever reach out to you? Or has no. Disney ever? No. <laughs> and I think that's probably a good thing. Right. Uh, you know, it's not like we call them and say, hey guys, I mean, the way that parodies work is you just kind of put it out there and hope that they're okay with it and Disney has been okay with it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's funny. The the Disney music and videos resonate with us a lot um, because we're we're fans of co-watchable content and mm -hmm. we love uh, Encanto. We obviously love Lin Manuel Miranda. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it it's it is. There's the parallels between 
but kind of our style and their style, you can't really ignore it. Right, exactly. I mean, did you ever imagine that this was would kind of blow up and it would be such a success that it has been over the number of years? You, you mean what we do for a living? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we have no business plan. We have no idea what we're doing. We don't know what we're doing next week. I don't know what I'm doing next hour. I know. <laughs> like we're, we just had a meeting about what are we going to do this week, and we didn't decide on it. Right. So, Typically, yeah. we have a, a we have a meeting every Monday morning. Um, it's Penn and myself, and then we have three people who work with us to help us, you know, with our website and posting videos and shooting videos. In in that Monday morning meeting, we usually decide the two or three videos that we're going to shoot tomorrow we didn't get around to and that. we didn't we didn't actually figure that out yet what do you got what's going what, on here? yeah yeah tell us what should we do a video on <laughs> i was just gonna, well like i said i have a three-year-old so all we're watching is disney all the time so <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> same it's so funny we we are definitely it's my kids are 12 and 15 and they still watch disney all the time so we'll never outgrow it <laughs> definitely i mean i'm sure over the years you probably have to deal with you know online haters and things like that how do you guys deal with that and it, did it ever sway you to being like oh maybe i don't want to do this anymore um it's so interesting because on our page they they stay away from our page when our stuff gets posted to other people's pages i'm sure it's there but we don't see that part of it yeah um the the more successful a video gets the more uh, an opportunity people have to voice dissenting opinions on it right. so um it's this weird double-edged sword when you have a video that goes super viral you know that there's going to be people who have opinions uh, of real hate mm -hmm. um when it comes to either your content or whatever it is that you stand for um what i can say is the first two couple of years were the hardest um just like a lot of other things like you take it personally you think these people are attacking you and really what they're attacking is a, is something with ones and zeros that went through space <laughs> um and it's it's really not you uh one real joy that i get is when somebody leaves a comment that's very hateful and we respond mm -hmm. um and uh we try to respond with kindness and you know it, it, a lot of times <laughs> the person will come back with wait a minute i didn't realize you're an actual person who's reading this well yeah we are yeah we are actual people mm -hmm. um but it, it 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 comes with the territory the biggest hope is that it never gets directed toward your family which for the most part it has not mm -hmm. um and uh you know i i think it it has toughened my skin up quite a bit for sure but i mean we both worked in news when mm -hmm. people were always calling in yeah complaining with, some, with something to say yeah but we definitely don't let it um we're human beings so when somebody says something hurtful of course it hurts your feelings but i don't know that we, we've structured our life where we don't really see a ton of that in our daily life yeah. I'm, I, I'm sure it's there but I'm sure it's there. We do not go looking for it. I'll say that. That's yeah. a good thing. Well, guys, congratulations again. Thank you so much for your time. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.